So kind of the result we expected, but not maybe in this manner. Welcome back to the desk. Ravish Ravish, you're gonna join here by Smacks and Rafa. Smacks and Tim the third. Um, AOE GT Cope, <laughs> high or low? <laughs> um like I said at the top of the show, I wasn't expecting them to win. Um, I I really want to see Wixie on an AD carry champion. Uh, if that happens, then then maybe my hopium raises. But uh, as of right now, no, I, I'm I'm perfectly fine. I'm I'm fully sober from the the hopium and the copium. Well, understandably. So here now, Rafa on the other end. I think hundred thieves are definitely ecstatic. But uh, considering who will stole tenacity's pentakill, can we expect another <laughs> from him this game? <laughs> uh, I mean, it depends on the the champion that Tenacity gets. I mean, like, Gwen is a fantastic 1v9 champion once you give her the right items. And I think, you know, the laning phase you know, where Gwen, you know, after Riot has noticed, hey, Gwen is both strong late, late early game and late game, we got we got to tune her down a bit. You know, she is noticeably weaker during the, the laning phase. And, oh my gosh, Smax, you're no longer flashbanged. It's yeah. Wow. <laughs> I... I'm sorry to derail things, but I realized what was wrong with my camera and why I looked so, yeah, flashing, and I fixed it. So, sorry about that. Yeah, I was suddenly Continue. just like, wait, it's like it's like a light disappeared. It's like a bulb in my room went out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. That was probably really jarring. I I realized I needed to do it in the break, and I forgot. Anyway, forget it. I, I'm good now. Yeah. Go, yeah, keep talking. You're good. We're good. Everything's good. <laughs> AWG is saying. not good, but you know what? We, we, yeah. we can be good. By moving over to a halftime show, I like to call this one Time is Money. Uh, what we're going to do is pretty simple, real lazy. I'm going to give you three different snapshots or descriptions of okay. three different builds from three different players throughout that game. And all you guys are going to do is tell me what time this was and which champion had this build. Oh, cool. okay. You know what? Yeah. Pretty yeah. simple. Pretty easy. All right. Awesome. Let's move on to the first one. Right up at the bottom, you should be able to see and the lower third as to what that build is. Cool. We have a pickaxe, a longsword, and a dagger. Hmm. Hmm. No. Not super uh, hard. Cool. I'll give okay. you guys 10 seconds to think oh, about it. Oh, it, 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 okay. it, I think it might be either Belveth. It's Belveth, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because it's, okay. it's orc I, components. Yeah, it can't be first back because you still have the jungle item. So it has to be second back, which is probably around six or seven minutes, I'd say. Maybe eight. Okay, like, okay. I, I'm okay. going to so, split the difference and say seven minutes. Yeah, so... um. First back, if you full clear, you usually get around 900 gold. Yeah. So you can he get had a pickaxe. pickaxe. Yeah, yeah you, you have a pickaxe off the first back. And then the second back, longsword plus dagger, that's another 650 gold, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I I can buy that. Um, I will... I'll, I'll, I'll double down. So, uh, seven minutes, yeah. Belveth. Heal. Man, that was perfect. You guys are both correct. <laughs> Damn, that was impressive. It was indeed nice. Belveth. Yeah, kill uh, for sure. And it was right around, I believe I have at the 7 minute and 38 second mark. That's Let's go! That. So, Not bad. Okay. Wow. Hey, we're good at this game. Ooh. Really impressive. Okay, look, Mark is a jungler and Smack's really smart. All right, look. <laughs> <laughs> Smacks, Maybe, Smacks know, has played jungle too. I, I think Smacks has played like every single role extensively. So. This yeah. is true. Smacks yeah. is the only person who I know that has a level seven Ramus, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or we're exposing me like this, okay? Yeah. See, I have Mastery level 7 Ramus, okay? The we'll Mastery's level 7 Ramus, and yet Bard, Rakan, Yasuo, LeBlanc, uh, it, like e every single. Classic <laughs> the list goes on and on. Okay, Smash so plays let's on. move on to our next build that we have to see what y'all got. Let's, see, let's, see, let's keep this up. We got a Bomb Cinder, a Doran Shield, a Null Magic Mantle, a Cloth Armor, and Boots. Okay, so either okay. Zack or Tom Kench, right? <clears throat> yes. I'm going to say that it's Zack. Um, I could, it's, you know what? It's probably both of them, but I'm going to say that it's Zack. Um, because I remember there was when, okay, so this is going to be very specific. Uh, Moose Hater got solo killed by Tenacity, and I'm, usually you want to stay in lane long enough to where you can finish your mythic item when you're top lane, and I think he probably recalled enough to where he had to buy components. So I'm going to say it's Zack, I'm going to say it's Moose Hater, and I think that solo kill happened at, like, 11 minutes into the game? 
Maybe 12? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to go with 12 minutes. So Zach, Moose Hater, 12 minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Zach, Moose Hater, 12 minutes. Mark, what do you have for me? Hmm. I'm just trying to think of what Ravish would grab from this game. Like, nothing happened on the bottom side of the map. Wixie was just straight chilling, farming yeah. away. But I think he finished Frostfire faster than Zach did. So, I think so uh, too. I'll, I'll, I'll once again double down with Smacks. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys did get one point on that. It was around, around the 12 minute mark. That is correct. But it was Tom Kench. Oh! It was Tom. <laughs> oh. No. Y'all had it. Y'all had it. Man. It was right there. It was right there. It was TK. I it knew it could have been either of them. It definitely Woo! could have been either of them. But Damn. yeah. I, I think I think we still did a good job. Our timing is really good. I'm surprised <clears> our <throat> timing is so good with this. I thought that'd be the hardest part. No, no, no. Y'all y'all actually kill it and all that. I'm genuinely impressed. <laughs> okay. And of course the final build that we have between these two. So let's see what they got for me. Now, you did get a little, uh, a little taste of this, but a Sunfire Aegis, a Spirit Visage, Ionian Boots, okay. Dorn this, Shield, and a Vision Word. Th this, this is Zach. This yeah, is Zach. for sure it's Zach. Uh, okay. No other Full champion time. builds Spirit Visage, so it's definitely Zach. You know mm -hmm. what, Max? Um, this is by mm -hmm. the end of the game. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because like by the end of the game, Tenacity mm -hmm. has like four items, right? Whereas, yeah. it like, poor Moose Hater has finally finished his spirit visage. And it's like, mm -hmm. all right, guys, I'm coming in. We're going to look for work. Oh, we're fighting. <laughs> oh, I'm dead, you know? Yeah. OK. So they Would ended. We... It was oh. it was like 30 minutes, I think. Yeah. Like 29, 30. So okay. yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll... it's the end of the game, but we'll we'll say a specific number and make it like 30 minutes. OK, 30 minutes, Rafa, 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah double down. Yeah. Man, nah, y'all, bro, it was 25 minutes in the game. 25? Oh, it was only 25. Oh, oh. 25 okay. minutes. I, mm -hmm. I think he had the same items at 30 minutes also. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Oh, man. Uh, I think that is definitely the issue that he unfortunately that just didn't get much more than that. <laughs> you know what? Moose Hater did his job. He played he Zach. Did. He, he went in on some plays, and he made knockups happen, and he created space. Unfortunately, his the damage dealers were not strong enough to actually compensate for all the crowd control that he created. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there was that one time that he almost did get a solo kill on Tenacity, right? It was they looked pretty close. Oh, that's true. Like, close. So it was, close. It was like, like one more bounce that he might have been able to get it, but... Tenacity decided, nope, snip, snip, easy peasy. Uh, and then he continued to do, he continued to snip, snap, and all that until the end of the game. But as we have, do have some time right now, though, what I do want to do is try to break down the game a little bit further as well, considering the points he talked about. Now, Tenacity and Ashley did go ahead and pop off as well, but I find Smax, there's some of the standouts too, you know, from AOE GT side. Of course, maybe, you know, Captain Shrimps didn't pop up how we expected it, but hey, he had some cool scout of the weeks, right? <laughs> he actually did. I, I think for Captain Shrimps, he, he, like I said before, he's been practicing the Syndra a lot, and I think he, he's in a position where it should be his most comfortable champion. It's just that Jimian really showed his wealth of experience right there and just played the lane way better than captain shrimps frankly like he he was doing a phenomenal job all throughout surviving all the poke he had a lot more mana at his disposal right there as well mm -hmm. on the first recall for captain shrimps you could see he was completely out of mana and jimmy still had about half to work with and this is before the leblanc mana changes mm -hmm. too so a whole lot of stuff going in favor of jimmy and i think if we get the same matchup again i expect a very similar thing to happen jimmy had a very clean game yeah, definitely so, and I think Jimmy has been a player that we definitely have tried to highlight throughout the entire season, who definitely grown a lot as well, too. Although, maybe he didn't pick up the Ludens, but definitely did his job as well, as making sure to lock down and try to assassinate as many targets as possible. On the other end, though, Rafa, I do want to take it back a bit to our main highlight matchup, right? That being between Will and Keel, too. And although Keel was on the Bell of Beth, the hyperscaling champion, got one Rift Herald, just wasn't able to execute to the, to the degree that Will was. Yeah, I... I mean, 
in game, we were both concerned that Hundred Thieves had just made an error by giving yeah. over Rift Herald mm -hmm. because it, it it is so damning in the hands of a team that is able to like execute on the Rift Herald push and you know maybe against a team that isn't so far ahead, which is probably what why Hundred Thieves didn't feel pressed to stop them or contest them at the Rift Herald and just went for a Drake trade instead, is that they AGT could not leverage that push further. They they recognized that Hundred Thieves had all five members on the top side of the map by the time they took out the first turret. So they were like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to back off. We're going to look for a different uh, bot. We're going to look for a bot push instead. 100 Thieves, once again, answered them. But the way that they positioned and corralled them, they had all five members trapped. And Tenacity yeah. was already pushing through the mid lane. And so AGT were like, guys, we can't stay here any longer. And so th mm -hmm. this was a good example and exercise from uh, 100 Thieves as a whole, just demonstrating the better coordination of in the the mid game that we have been wanting yeah. to see from them for so long that's a big deal too because like like you were saying in that game that is the biggest lacking in their gameplay so far that we've seen over the course of the split with this new roster lineup it's it's not quite been the the biggest strength of theirs so the fact that they were able to keep that lead going and i think you highlighted it very well there with tenacity as well have tenacity on a split pusher in the right spot every single time that is, to me, very telling of a team's improvement overall. And I think that's going to be a big thing to watch out for over their mm -hmm. growth. Maybe they can keep getting better and better and better over the course of this entire Proving Guns tournament so they can mm -hmm. achieve that goal that they've very clearly set out in front of them of making it to the finals against Team Liquid again. Mm -hmm. Exactly that, right? Because, yet again, we have very, very high hopes for this team. And they're going up against TLA, of course, being the ultimate goal with the end. I know, look at many of our brackets, uh, we do have both these teams at the very end. I don't think I know a single person who's who's currently on uh, uh, on the talent that doesn't have Hundred Thieves versus TLA. I'd be shocked if they well, didn't. Well, well, I know one this, person. Yeah, that this guy. <laughs> no, not me. No, I, I have the I have both of them in the finals. I was gonna take this opportunity to flame m the bane of my existence one more time, Lenny Mazel White. He has, <laughs> <fly quest. laughs> he has fly quest in the finals. And again, oh, in I'm, the finals. See, that, see, you guys are on my side now. Whoa. I don't know what's what's going on there. He he just he's Whoa. not a hundred thieves believer. I think that we should is... tell him to watch so this I, game because uh, all right, it's pretty good. I, I thought you had Cloud Nine Team Liquid in the finals. No, see, I thought about doing that. Um, and initially, we're gonna get really into this, and we should probably talk about this later when we actually yeah, have Cloud Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I I think Cloud Nine's really good. I think hundred thieves is is a little bit better. Okay. So, yep. as, as you were saying, Rufy, sorry to derail you once again. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a great time. Um, I'm happy to know <laughs> that I'm not alone in my venture. And you're right. Uh -huh. Cloud9 is great. Under Thieves, also great. But a team right now that's not looking too hot yet again is uh, has been AOE GT. But they have one more game to prove themselves. Will Amateur pick up their second dub? Or will Under Thieves continue to dominate? Whoa, you know, Rafa, Smacks, let me know what y'all got. All right. I don't know. <laughs> I, we got an Udyr ban. I can tell you that much. Boom. We, I'll tell we also you. have a side swap. <laughs> and side swap. Okay, you know what, Smacks? What yeah. do we have to do to manifest a Camille Busio this game? Um. Okay, so I'm trying to find scissors. Let me get some scissors real quick. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where my scissors are, but just you know, I I, I don't have. We we got the scissors though. Maybe okay. we can clap our scissors in the air for scissor legs. You know. <laughs> Camille, Camille, Camille. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. it because she, yeah, scissor legs. Do it, gotcha. Rafa. Uh, Camille, Camille, Camille. Cam <laughs> <laughs> just hoping. I. <laughs> it's like crossing your fingers, but scissors. I, I was hoping we could just all tweet at Golden Glue right now. It's like, let Camille, <laughs> let Busio play Camille. Like, just please. Oh, oh, check Here, this out. Here, wait, no, let me, uh, let me oh, do this I, I right think, now. Wait, wait, wait. I'll, I'll, I'll tweet at him this very moment. You want me to do it? Uh, you can. But let I just want to point out that. Let play Camille <laughs> at Golden Glue. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Zara and there it is. has been banned, Smax. So, and while that oh. may not be, seem super exciting, that says to me they want a first pick Azir. 
Actually, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Zareth has been a big pocket pick for Captain Shrimps for as long as I've been casting him. <laughs> the Fizz also one of them. So maybe Tenacity the showing, us, uh, showing us that they're thinking about the Fizz also. I think the Azir makes a ton of sense, though. Jimmy, and you, sent, you said before that he hasn't been the strongest control mage like player, Azir. but I think... I think Azir has been a bit of an exception. We're going to see a Camille game, or a, <laughs> a Talia game instead, though. Yeah. Well, mm, I, I guess uh, Azir could also, or Zareth would also be pretty bad for Talia as well, because the idea is that Zareth just has obnoxiously long range, and so into champions or control mages that don't have as much range. <gasps> oh... Oh, we're, we're, we're cutting the conversation. It is, it's Wixie yes. time. It's yes. Wixie time. Ooh, Gangplank too. But yeah, the Draven is finally here for Wixie. This has been a staple pick of his in his champion pool for years now. And very different from the Tom Kench. This is going to give AoE Ginger Termic a lot of agency in that bottom lane. I'm super, super excited for this. With the uh, Gangplank as well. Like it, th this could be a Captain Shrimp's Gangplank mid as well like, you know what you're right uh, 100 thieves academy doubling down on to lee sin again for will so this is a mid lane to leah so dodging out on the zarath matchup as well knowing that captain strips has that one super super played out looks like tenacity is running back the gwen all right smash can't blame him <laughs> you, you know what as someone uh, who has coached in the past I, I, I believe anytime you want to play a new pick, you got to make sure that the rest of the variables don't change too much so you're not changing the game plan. So okay. I mean, they've only changed to Leah instead of LeBlanc. There's still a world where we get Camille Busio. You know, you're right. Our scissor maneuver here may have instead manifested a Gwen, which I, I'm just not realizing <laughs> may have gotten our, our blades crossed here just a tad. Um, <laughs> Maybe we need a better uh, a better Beetlejuice maneuver. You know what? I, I'm just hoping that the tweet reaches Golden Glue in time. I'm hoping yeah. he sees it and is like, "Yeah, you know what, Busio, you earned it. We, we're a game up. Let's 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 play the Camille. Let's 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 flex on him." But Ruffy, AGT, you gotta you gotta retweet it. <laughs> I, I, ping my, him again. Ping him again. My phone's dead. I and I, I, I oh. don't want to pull up another window. Anyway, okay. um, this is AGT slamming down some of their most signature picks. On, on some of their biggest carries right now. Not only Wixie getting his Draven, the Karthus also going over to Keel as well. And uh, we've talked about before, Keel is one of our few junglers who specializes a lot in magic damage junglers, ones that want to power farm and create a huge resource lead. Obviously we saw that Belveth kind of follows a similar trend in wanting to farm up, but her power was so tight tied closely to Rift Herald. This time around for Karthus, if you're able to dodge out on the Lee Sin matchup, you will eclipse his power very fast. Yeah. This is not to say you should build Eclipse on Karthus, though. That is a very yeah, bad yeah, yeah, idea. Yeah. But My you bad. should build a lot of damage, and you should build the rest of your composition to match that. You don't need any more magic damage on your entire team when you have a Karthus. So for AoE Ginger Turmeric, uh, yeah, this is this is a big pick. They have a lot of them here. Weak side champion for the Gangplank if they do want to send it top. However, like you said, Rafa, there is that chance that the Gangplank goes mid, and Hundred Thieves Academy actually have acknowledged that. They've banned away Garen. Assuming that there is that possibility, I think that's so funny. Yeah, uh, I I think Tenacity like went through the list of champions that Moose probably plays. It's like, what would just absolutely suck playing against? Oh yeah, Garen. Point and click silence. <laughs> Big beefy dude. I don't want to deal with yeah. that. I agree. And the Rhaotic Lask, I think, is a really good ban against Duo King as well. It is the biggest utility pick that he's been playing recently uh, in terms of the range supports that he has as at his disposal. I think he'll probably default to something like an Ash from here just to make sure they have a solid lane. But we'll, we'll figure out that later. We now have a Fiora pick into the Gwen, old. solidifying that we have Gangplank mid also. We have some fun stuff going on. And this is super bold from Moose Hater. He is saying... You know what, Tenacity? I heard you were the best top laner, but we we got a kill on you, 2v1, and I almost got a solo kill on you. So you know what? Instead of playing a tank, I'm going to play the skill matchup. And if there is a world where Moose Hater actually gets ahead of Tenacity, Fior is like, oh, we, 
No, no Camille Busio. Oh man. I'm sorry, Smax. The tweet did not work. But you know what? I think while Camille Busio was going to be insanely exciting, I think we can be just as excited about the fact that AGT are ready to throw it down. They are ready to throw everything against the wall in potentially their last game of Proving Grounds. Well, my day is slightly ruined knowing that Busio is on Nautilus channel. <laughs> I'm still excited for Aegis and your Termrex comp, I guess. <laughs> oh, look at that! It's a Blitzcrank! Ooh, it's Blitzcrank! Okay. Yeah! That's pretty cool! Blitzcrank! Blitzcrank! Yeah. Blitzcrank! 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 This is sweet! All right. So this is the first not ranged champion that Duo King has played in a pretty long time, honestly. Yeah, um, been a hot playing minute. pretty much only ranged champions. But the the big thing here is that there aren't there aren't too many mobile champions that you want to hit with the Blitzcrank hook on the side of Hunter Thieves. You have the Talia and the Aphelios. If you hook either of those two champions, they almost surely do die with all the bursts that you have on your team with Karthus and Gangplank and even Draven. So. I like the pick. It's continuing the level of spice, no pun intended, that we're seeing from AoE Ginger Turmeric. I, I, this, this feels more like what a winning draft looks like to me compared to what we've seen from them in the last game where they've got Wixie on Tom Kinch. Did we lose Rafa? Rafa, are you there? I think we lost him. I, I, I think he, he may have popped off too hard when he saw the Blitzcrank pick. Maybe he got uh, the Blitzcrank ultimate surge through him and then it completely shut out his entire uh, internet and everything. <laughs> uh, hopefully we get to see what happens with uh, with Rafa. Um, I think I just heard that we're, we're going to take a, a quick break to see if we can get him back. Is that what I heard correctly? Uh, yeah, so we're, we'll be right back as we, we search for our Rafa friend. <laughs> see you in a sec. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. Oh, I'm back. Oh, my goodness. No break needed. Okay. We have him. All right, what, right. what happened? Did you, did you blitzcrank all I, I, I don't know. It, it, I, my internet just, like, you know, pooped itself. It, it's okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> all right. Well, we have the game. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Well, sorry, guys. I didn't mean to cause any alarm. But you know what? We've got, got some exciting picks on the field as you probably were getting into uh, all honestly smacks the last thing i remember is just chanting blitz crank blitz crank blitz crank yeah and then that was it he he left us doing what he loved most hyping up cool picks in draft <laughs> rafa you will be missed we'll no. bury you right next to kungus whoa i don't i'm still alive man like, I... Oh, okay. Never mind. We don't have to do that then. <laughs> Hold off the funeral. I'm I'm hoping to live a long and prosperous life, and for many many bangers Minions in the past, in, in, in the future, you know. Well, uh, if everyone in the chat can prage for Rafa's internet, that that does not happen again, that would be much appreciated. Yeah, you know, oh. I'm. <laughs> we're gonna knock on wood and make sure that it doesn't yeah 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 it doesn't uh you know go out again but in this game let's let's dive into the Lee Sin Karthus matchup here Smacks because yeah as you said before Will went for a full clear last game against the champion mm -hmm. that prioritizes full clearing like the Bell Beth this time around it's no different you know if Will goes for a full clear again this gives a significant advantage over to Keel yeah, Keel really appreciated it last game that he went completely uncontested in the jungle on Belveth in his first clear. It didn't end up meaning too, too much, but nonetheless, the scaling was big for Belveth, and it's even bigger for this Karthus, because we already mentioned in this draft, he is the only magic damage threat. If you're building magic resistance, it is exclusively for Karthus, and that does not feel great, especially against a champion like that Draven, who can completely obliterate you with the lethality builds that have been popping up really recently. So, great setup for Akil. He's got this scaling online. He just needs to hope that Will doesn't bully him out of his jungle anytime soon, which doesn't seem to be happening right now. Akil doing a great job so far. Yeah, so far, the only matchup that I imagine you can effectively get push against is against Gangplank with the Talia, at least early on. But I don't even know how this matchup plays out, which is something that I think Jimmy is also <laughs> asking himself as the game goes on. It's like, okay, what, at what timers 
does like Gangplank have better push than me? Like at what levels yeah. do I lose all ins or can I poke him off this wave? You know? And that makes Will's job even harder to decipher. Can I invade? Can I have prio on this next couple of waves? Or will I have a timer where we can actually put kill behind? And that's something that Captain Shrimps doesn't have a problem with, because he's played a lot of Gangplank mid. It's the reason why we expected it, 100 Thieves Academy expected it in the draft with that Garen ban. They knew this was coming, but as you said, Rafa, that doesn't necessarily mean that you know exactly how to play into it. It's one of the best things that we get when we have Amateur versus Academy. Those pocket picks are always incredibly fun. But talking about the win conditions here for AWG Ginger Turmeric, this composition does have a lot of scaling. If Captain Shrimps does get out of this lane in a favorable position, which we've already said is likely, he and Keel will have a really solid setup to scale throughout this game. Their late game damage is going to be absurd. We already talked about it with Karthus, but Gangplank has a lot of scaling in his own right as well. A lot of crit items can really bolster that one, especially on this new patch. You really do need those crit items to get the slow working. So. Captain Shrimps and Keel, they want to play as defensively as possible. They want to get to that late game situation. The other thing, too, is how much zone control and, like, just ease ability for AGT to control battle lines the later the game goes on. But Ooh. Will, making use of the priority of Lee Sin versus the Karthus matchup, looks for an early gank onto the bottom side of the map. Okay. Gets a flash and Ignite down on the Duo King, but the hook back. Oh. Does Wixie get enough damage? It's Ignite. First blood over to Duo King. Ooh. And Will goes in for the dive, looking for one more on attack, but they can't get oh. it. It's finally BMFX, who willingly <gasps> flashes in. They go back <laughs> in for the dive. Will will go down, but man, that was dope. <laughs> two for two in the bottom lane right there, Rafa. What, <laughs> what all is going on in this game already? Is I I'm actually wrong. It was three for two. Wait, did I miss something? I think I I think I miscalculated here. Oh, there was a oh, gang on okay, the top side of the top map. Lane. Keel setting things up in the top lane again. Tenacity not prepared for the early gank from Karthus. He skipped his Krugs to get here. Very, very sneaky from Keel. Wow, okay. Yeah, ATT, they're pivoting off of the information they got in from the first game, right? That Moose, Hater, and Keel were able to find a couple of early m moves against Tenacity and taking advantage of him playing maybe a far more aggressive in the lane than he expected, right? And so, mm -hmm. As we said before, if, if this Fiora gets ahead in the matchup, then she is one of the best split pushers in the game. To talk a little bit more about what happened in the bottom lane, though, Wixie, he did get a kill on Draven, which is normally the win condition. However, the cash out was already cut in half because he died before, and the turret knocked out Will, giving him the kill afterwards. So not nearly the big cash out that you typically expect from a Draven. It's not something that Wixie is going to be incredibly excited about. But this dragon is more along those lines, as AoE Ginger Termix still have a lot of pressure in this bottom lane. Regardless of that gank, Draven and Blitzcrank early levels are not to be trifled with you do not want to walk up and be in a precarious situation especially without flashes which bmfx and busio do not have so a we ginger termix still have a lot of pressure on this bottom side of the rift Whoa. captain should flash forward for the trial by <gasps> fire and jimmy was trying to flash away to dodge the cannon barrage but the damage from the requiem is enough to take out jimmy and, and agt in their second game find themselves with a gold lead at six and a half minutes this is more what you were talking about earlier, Rafa. Jimmy and not prepared for the amount of damage that Captain Trimps is able to deal with just a sheen and boots. And Keel picking up the scraps as well. Moving down to this bottom lane, he's already level six. Even if he doesn't get any kills here, just leeching experience is perfect for Karthus as he is the late game win con. And Keel making pressure ganks and taking time out of his pathing to just to make sure checking on lane states, ensuring that, hey, Wixie and Duo King, I know you guys got ganked, you know, a couple minutes ago. Are you guys still good? It's like, yeah, I'm I'm still ahead in CS. I'm, I'm fine. It, it, it's The lane isn't completely doomed for me yet. You know, AGT still doing great in mid lane, respectively, as well as the top side of the map as well. So the fact that Keel is finding moments on a champion that prioritizes farming and is still finding himself ahead, I mean, this is, this is the mark of someone that has practiced the Karthus matchup so many times over and will is now finding has to find ways to keep himself relevant to make sure that agt aren't the ones that outscale them. 
Whenever Karthus has the most gold in the game, the team with the Karthus is very, very happy. Not to mention the Karthus player themselves. Keel doing that very, very well right now for us today. There's a reason that we saw this champion as a big potential threat in the draft. Hunter Thieves Academy didn't quite think it that dangerous. They had the opportunity to take away some of Keel's big AP threats like that Fiddlesticks. They left it open this time, but they also left open the Karthus and Keel showing his preference for us today. I already have that first Drake. The big neutral objective to play for right now is going to be that Rift Herald. It's spotted by AGT, but I think for Keel, he's he's really, really okay with scaling, and as long as he's still getting these camps, which he will continue to do, it's okay if they drop this Rift Herald. Yeah, this is a, at least a good look for Will and the rest of 100 Thieves, getting a little bit of local gold in addition to that objective. But Keel, as you said before, I mean, th there's free camps to take now on the bottom side of the map, and that is mm -hmm. even... That is so good for Karthus to just continue getting experience and gold from the jungle resources. BMFX also with this pressure is pushed out of lane, which in addition helps Wixie with the pressure advantage on the bottom side of the map. So now, Smax, uh, when we're looking at how AGT are getting into the mid game, because this is a team that you've talked about having some of the best mid games in amateur, or 100 Thieves in a spot where they can kind of fight for the lead before it gets out of hand for AGT. Well, it's that same mid-game issue that you highlighted in the previous game, Rafa, because 100 Thieves, they haven't had the cleanest aspect of that game on lock for this entire split. They showed that they are cleaning it up when they're winning. They now have to show what it looks like for them. Have they practiced it enough when they are on the opposite side of things, when they are losing the game? Can they have that same strong mid-game that we've seen from them in the past? Mm -hmm the last game and bring it back because yeah it's gonna be hard look at this the pressure advantage keel hasn't even shown himself Ooh. yet it's just wixie and duo king getting into the face of bmfx but okay. after the flash advantage duo king takes advantage of the flash being down gets the knockup guaranteed for wixie to cash on in busio is forced to flash over the wall and yet will is here but the damage has already been done now that is what I call a cash out, Rafa. Waiting in the brush was Keel for all of the crowd control with the Wall of Pain after the flash was already used by 2 King. Hunter Thieves Academy, they don't, they don't think that there's anyone in that brush at all. They try to aggress forward. They try to shut down the wind condition of this Draven, but they should have known that the only reason they were going to do that is because they have all the confidence in the world that the kill is coming through for their Draven. Wixie is no slouch in this lane. He now has a lot more gold, and he's not even going for a first item quite yet. He's just going for the thrift shop, all the components on this Draven, just to make sure that when that first item does hit, it's going to hit as hard as it possibly can. Kill already being one of the first people in this game to have a mythic. Will also has the Gore Drinker fully completed as well. But I'm curious, what can Will do 400 Thieves to find an opportunity to get themselves back in the lead, in control? They're, they're down 2,000 gold. But I'm paying a lot of respect to what AGT can do once we hit the mid-game stride. A couple of control wards would have allowed Will to hop over that wall. Can't risk it into Captain Trimps, though, I feel, as he does have that flash. Really difficult to kill that gangplank through the oranges. But by him not being on the map and not really doing a whole lot here, sort of just giving AGT more time to themselves. And that's exactly what Karthus needs in the game of League of Legends. Taking away that dragon secures them halfway towards Soul, again, confiding all that scaling into their entire team. Mm -hmm. It's huge for AoE Ginger Termic. This, this very well could be a win for them. Now, 100 Thieves, they're not giving up yet. Will, knowing that he couldn't make any moves into the mid lane, Pains towards the top side say, okay, let's just try to get you all these plates here, Tenacity. But the cannon barrage from Captain Trench, global pressure, clears out the first wave, delays that eventual turret breakdown a little bit, but they eventually brute force their way through, and this will be a full turret and first brick going over to 100 Thieves. That's going to do a lot to give a whole bunch of gold into Tenacity, who just in the last game got a quadra kill on this champion, a one versus three outplay as well. Solo killing AoE 
in the top lane too. This is the person that you want to give all of your gold to. This is the person that's going to make it more difficult for a champion like Gangplank and like Draven to play. You have that mist that allows you to force enemy spells to also mist. Uh, the English didn't quite hmm. work out there, but you get what I'm oh going for. God. The barrels can't quite connect. <laughs> oh, I hate you. I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> it was good. No, it, it was good. That's why I'm I'm mad. <laughs> but for tenacity, though, he is he's chilling after getting a very generous gank and assist from Will. Not necessarily, you know, taking out Moosehater, but getting the gold from all five plates into his pockets. He is now ahead, roughly 800 to 1,000 gold in this lane. He's able to hit his spikes a little bit sooner. But for the rest of 100 Thieves, it's not going to be enough. I mean, that that's one step towards it, but you're still behind in gold when it comes to AGT. For a few of these champions, too, the 100 Thieves have drafted for themselves. The, the mid game from behind is actually just really difficult. Regardless of how good your team is at that stage of the game, playing Lee Sin and playing Nautilus from behind, it doesn't feel good. You don't have the same level of burst that you would normally. You don't have the same safety of walking in and outplaying them with your crowd control. It just doesn't quite work the same. There are a few tools that still do about the same thing, though. The Ophelios with Gravitum, that is one way to overcome that and try to still make those plays happen on these champions. And that's what they're going to need to do. Okay, Will, this is one of those moments. Can you find a way to get explosive plays down onto the map? Duo King is forced to flash over the wall. Cannot follow over because Keel is there to protect the support but it's still a flash and double sums not only out of duo king but also out of wixie this is a good setup this is the way that you start to get those leads and those advantages with the champions that you've drafted wixie and duo king are now very vulnerable in that lane even though wixie has a gigantic item spike that he's working with right now no flash not a lot of mobility on this champion you shut shut him down it denies a ton of that momentum from Draven, and it brings it right back over to your side. Hunter Thieves, I like that idea quite a bit. You just have to do it again. AGT, though, are going to stop it in its tracks. They have this wave, and they have the timer to knock out this turret completely. Wixie and Duo King should be able to escort themselves on out safely, but Tenacity is here on the bottom side of the map. 100 Thieves are thinking about full committing. Ooh, the flash advantage from Busio gets the lockdown on the Duo King. He's just trying to buy space. Wixie wants to go forward and see if he can trade on up, but he still has no summoners, so it's e not easy for him to follow. But Keel with the Requiem gets a bunch of damage down. Wixie doesn't have the ultimate anymore. But Moose Hater Ooh. flashing it with the repost looks for some damage. The final bar gets one on a Busio, and he has the movement speed to continue forward. Ooh. He finds a double. Moose Hater is on the board. Oh, that was the idea from 100 Thieves. You could see the wheels turning. They had the same exact idea that we laid out. They needed to force the flash out of Wixie and then go again to kill him. They didn't wait for their ultimates, though. They didn't wait for that depth charge. They didn't wait for the Gravitum Moonlight Vigil. It didn't quite work out. Yes, they killed Duo King, but that cash out is still there in full effect from Wixie. And they left themselves so vulnerable afterwards. The teleport play from Moose Hater excellently played on the Fiora, too. Oh man, you, you could see the 100 Thieves, they, they know what they needed to do. This lead might just be too big from AoE. Yeah, and, and 100 Thieves were so close at closing that gap as well. Going into that fight, 1,000 gold down, but two kills and a shutdown. Going over to Moose Hater means that he, alongside AGT, are now up 3,000 gold as a five-man squad. And with AGT already leading in Dragons, this means 100 Thieves, they are forced to start contesting. Oh. Rift Herald's gonna help with that one. Looks like they might be able to take down that entire mid lane turret. Oh, oh, oh Busio! Okay, Busio, that, that is was the slick. only way you live that. And that's the grand challenge down from uh, Moose Hater as well. And they were so, so confident that he was able to get that. But Busio with the buffer on the dredge line. It's now time okay. to fight at the dragon. Keel, can he secure this down? It's the third dragon of the game over the AGT. The battle line has been scattered. Rest of 100 Thieves finding a way to get Tenacity. it. Tenacity's now on the flank. If you find Wixie, you can win the rest of the, the fight right here. But Wixie is distancing himself, <gasps> and he has the all fuck? the space from Captain oh, Shrimps and oh, Keel. Oh. Wall of Pain and Cannon Barrage means the rest of 100 Thieves cannot get in, and that hook from Duo King finds Jimian. 
Oh, you could see again where 100 Thieves, if that play was on even footing, they might have been able to win it. If Tenacity had a little bit more gold, if they had a little bit more damage in the tank, maybe 100 Thieves could turn that one around, but they just don't. They didn't play out that early game. It's snowballing into a huge, huge lead from AoE. And again, AoE is the cleanest mid-game team that we have on the amateur side of things. They know how to snowball lead. They know how to keep it going for themselves. We're seeing it in front of our very eyes. And you see how difficult it is for 100 Thieves to get back into the fight once Shrimps and Kiel set up all of their tools here. I really love the battle lines that are drawn here. And even with Duo King playing Blitzcrank, you can see he's still operating as a tank. And he's still going for the assassinations with the, with the it feels like the ultimate, but the Q for Blitzcrank, the key spell there. I really love the way that Duo King played all of that out. And again, he's, he's playing outside of his comfort zone right now. He usually does play those ranged champions, but he is the big carry for his team. It's weird to say, because it's Blitzcrank, but in that fight, it's 100% true. AGT are exploding on the map right now. And while the gold lead still says only 3,000 gold, they are 3,000 gold ahead against the second best team in Academy. Like, this is absolutely huge. And AGT, if they carry this momentum forward, if they can find a way to close out the game before 100 Thieves, find clutch plays like this one. Moose Hater stalling out as much time as he can, but tenacity damage far outweighs his ability to endure. You see the idea there from Moose Hater. You, at a certain point, you just have to predict that the kick is coming and you have to throw out the repost. But Will plays as patient as he possibly and waits for the repost to fully exit so that he can kick him right into the wall, extending that amount of crowd control, keeping you in one spot, effectively stunning you. One of the nice creative things you can do with a Dragon's Rage. And that's a big shutdown as well. That's, that's gonna be really big for 100 Thieves. So far, and does not shorten up the gold lead. AGT is still finding themselves in or ahead of the game. Mid turret is about to fall here in favor of AGT mm. and Moose Hater. Oh, a teleport. It's payback time, Tenacity. And this time it is Moose Hater that has the additional friend and kill, securing the kill for them. Man, that smacks. I cannot believe that this is the, the game and the result that is playing out right now. I am absolutely floored by how well AGT are playing right now. Yeah, it's wild. I, I I, wish I could tell you that I'm surprised, but I'm not. This is just how a team like this operates. They know what needs to be done and they know what needs to happen in order for them to keep a lead going. They have so much scaling on their team as well. This draft lends itself expertly to what they need. And I got to give a lot of credit to Argentum Sky here because we we know from the amateur side of things, he's been around for a very long time. He has had some expert drafts. It's just sometimes, sometimes he really likes just micromanaging his players. This is what, this is what happens when he plays in collegiate as well. He was on the top eight team for Michigan State. And instead of being the coach for that team, he just decided that he wanted to play Yumi and micromanage in the middle of the game as he is really good at that. But the other thing that he's very, very good at is finding creative drafts and letting his players comfort shine. And that's what we're seeing today. That's what we see a lot from AOA Ginger Turmeric. Seeing multiple comfort picks come out in a potentially elimination game or, or not, not quite the, not quite elimination. Their first game of the upper bracket that would send them to the lower bracket. And they're playing like this, finding a pick on the Jimian. Doesn't seem like he's completely whoa. out here. Busey Busey has solo kill the today. lockdown. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. BMFX coming out on the right side of the flank. Gets the kill down on a Wixie. And now Duo King finds himself overextended. He was able to trade one back on the Jimian. And I think he already called it out on the other side as well. Yeah. Moose Hater solo killed Tenacity on the bottom side of the map. Sorry to cut off your flow. I was just so surprised that that just happened. Moose Hater. I want to see what went down there because that is completely absurd. We've seen Moose Hater do some very surprising things in a lot of the games that they play. I remember when they were playing in the elimination game in the, the quarterfinals of the most recent event against Maryville, Moose Hater kind of clowned on Niles in the last couple of games. 
It seems like he might have just done this to Tenacity as well. The guy who we've hyped up as the best top laner in the entire tournament. He's got a gigantic lead here, but still, that is massive. I hope we get to see it. Yeah, and this is Ocean Soul that AGT have just picked up. Like, not only the individual Drakes have been buffed on this patch, but also Ocean Soul is just, can feel so oppressive against a team that has no reliable way of cutting down sustain without itemizing into the items necessary. And for AGT, they can play the long extended fight, so sustain from Ocean Soul favors them greatly. And I think they are just a couple of plays away from being able to bring us to a game three. And bad news for Hunter Thieves, they have not purchased any Grievous Wounds whatsoever. They've got a couple of Ignites, but that's it. That's single target that only lasts for a couple of seconds, and then it is done. Nobody else has purchased it a, even a little bit. That's not to say that they can't from here on out, but if a fight breaks out right now, that Ocean Soul is in full effect. Wixie, he, he's completely impossible to kill unless you one-shot him. He has two Lifesteal items and Ocean Soul on Draven. Like, who is killing that? Not me. And I don't think anyone on 100 Thieves. <laughs> Not man. me either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, AGT, they're going to start this one up. This is incredible to see. 100 Thieves, will they have to pull out one last Hail Mary to stop them from taking the Baron? Will throws everything into the pit, but is blinking on health and goes down to Keel. And the rest of AGT are dealing with the um, remaining members of 100 Thieves, taking out BMFX. Busio forced out of the pit, and it's Wixie cashing in on former teammates from 100 Thieves Academy, finding another one with Moose Hater. AGT do not drop a single member and pick up the Baron. This is what I'm talking about when I say the AoE Ginger Turmeric on their best day are the best amateur team. When they are in the zone, they cannot be stopped. They get leads like this and they completely wipe you off the face of the earth. Four for zero on the Baron play. There's no possible way that anyone on the side of 100 Thieves Academy can withstand this. They already have the Ocean Soul that you highlighted. They can't even kill Captain Shrimps even after dumping everything they possibly can into him the sustain is too big and aoe ginger turmeric they play these objective setups incredibly well they know when they need to turn they know when to kick it into high gear and we're seeing this in full effect in the second seed of the whole event i just feel like there's no words i could say that could express the amount of shock that i'm going through but it's also just absolutely elated surprise that AGT yeah. are pulling out a performance like this against one of our best academy teams. And, you know, while we can say that, yeah, you know, this matchup does favor AGT a little bit because one of the best mid games in amateur against 100 Thieves who have struggled in their mid game decision making. And it, and it, it is coming to fruition as the punishment for 100 Thieves as picking a, a composition that relied on making early game picks and early game leads, AGT diffused that. They are the ones that outscale and outpace them in the early first 15 minutes. And now we see AGT on the doorsteps of 100 Thieves, ready to bring us to a game three, Ocean Soul in hand, Baron buff in hand, oh. Will getting caught out by Duo King, looking for the pick. And it's now 100 Thieves. Uh, do they want to fight this one? Will's taking a lot of damage. He's looking for the kick, but Moose Hater silences him. Sends him back to the fountain. And Duke King comes back to play. A beautiful rocket grab. We'll find Tenacity on the back end. Wixie and the rest of AGT dealing with BMFX on the left side. Akil is ready to sing his song. Ooh. Oh, good interrupt from Busio. Good presence of mind to stop the damage coming out from the Requiem. But it comes at the cost of his life. And now the rest of AGT only have to worry about two versus is three as they now look to push to end the game that's gonna be it rafa aoe ginger turmeric are defying all odds and bringing us to a third game in the first round against 100 thieves academy amateur is going strong holy camoli smacks agt when we looked at the possible matches where an amateur team could upset and an academy team, this was not on our list. <laughs> we we, we yeah. did not chalk 100 
Thieves Academy dropping a game for quite some time in the upper bracket. And I do want to take this time to uh, correct myself as I was saying earlier throughout the series saying that this was potentially the last match for AGT. That's my fault. This is an upper bracket. <laughs> There's still This is a double elimination bracket, so even if AGT were didn't get the lead they got and lost the series. They still had one more lower bracket. But AGT said, no, 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 Rafa, we're, we're, we're taking through the game three. <laughs> we're not even going down to the uh, lower bracket. And now 100 Thieves, they're the ones that have to figure out, oh, crap, guys, what do we got to do next for this next game? This is my favorite thing about Proving Grounds. Right here, right now, Rafa, get when, when we've got, you know, we, you've got you, you're an academy guy, you've been with academy the whole year, you got me, I've been casting the amateur guys the entire year. To you, this is like the biggest possible thing that could possibly happen to me. That's just, that's just a which is determined. This is what they do. They just take wins completely out of nowhere and they look exactly like that. When I think of what the formula is for a which is turmeric win, it's exactly to a T what we just saw. Wixie fitting in like a glove. It's so beautiful what this team is able to, is able to do and what they've been able to do the entire year long. If 100 Thieves isn't careful, they will go to the lower bracket today. Yeah, I I mean, Teal played the jungle matchup so, so damn well. He, he knew when, he knew his timers when Will would have a better advantage than him on the map, dodged it on the cross, you know, pathing away from where Will was going to start and just making sure that he was efficiently catching out the side lanes at times where they weren't expecting a Karthus gank. Because you, you don't always expect Karthus to prioritize ganking over farm after quite some time. And with the mix-ups that Kill provided, he not only made sure that he was ahead of Will, but he was also getting his laners ahead. And then we got to see that even Moose Hater benefiting off of that advantage and taking down one of our biggest, you know, hopeful prospects for next year in LCS in Tenacity. So I'm I'm so damn excited now to see how this game three wraps up between AGT and 100 Thieves because now I feel like 100 Thieves, they're in a position where they can no longer underestimate this team. They have to bring it. But of course, we will see how this concludes when we come back after this break. Expect that that Lerlo gave me that 10 rating, the best rating. But uh, I think I definitely still have like a lot to improve on to be crowned the best in the academy. But um, yeah, I mean, I respect Lerlo for that. <laughs> 